the name of Jesus. Let's all stand together, number 42. Let us praise the name of Jesus, prophet, priest, and sovereign king. To him render adoration, Lord, and homage to him bring. Let us praise the name of Jesus, God incarnate, from above, come to save his chosen people, sent by God in covenant love. Let us praise the name of Jesus, who upon Mount Calvary Shed his blood and sealed our pardon, died from sin to set us free. Let us praise the name of Jesus, risen, conquering, gracious friend, advocate and mediator, all our hopes on him depend. Let us praise the name of Jesus, for he brought us to his fold. Come exalt his name and worship. May the Savior be extolled. Let us praise the name of Jesus till we see him face to face. Then through the endless ages praise him for his love and grace. Please be seated. Good morning. If you'd like to turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, we'll pick up where we left off last Sunday. And uh, <clears throat> advocate, mediator, and friend, his love and his grace. Isn't that what we just sang about? I'm so very thankful that we have a Savior, a Savior who's able to save to the uttermost all by himself. He's not counting on me for any contribution in order for him to accomplish the work of salvation. The sins of God's people have been put away, and uh, he's our hope. He is our hope. Well, Let's, uh, let's pray together, ask his blessings on our time together. Our Heavenly Father, so very thankful that you've once again brought us here to this place. We're thankful for the promise of thy presence. We're thankful for the power of thy spirit. We're thankful for the truthfulness of thy word. And oh, how thankful we are for the successful salvation accomplished by thy dear son and how hopeful we are that your Holy Spirit would bless your word to our hearts and that you would reveal to us the glory of Christ and give us hope in his person and in his finished work. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> We left off last Sunday with verse 4 in chapter 2. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. What a glorious statement. That's where we are right now. We've been allowed. 
by God to be put in trust with the gospel. It's not our gospel to to change. It's not our gospel to interpret. It's our gospel to declare. It's God's gospel. It's the gospel of his glorious grace in the accomplished work of his son. It's good news. Salvation is of the Lord. It is required of a steward, and we're all stewards of the gospel if we're the people of God. It is required of a steward that he be found faithful. So our our duty, our responsibility, and our joy is to declare the truth of the gospel, to exalt Christ, to praise him as we just, as we just, if the gospel is the only, the gospel of God's free grace in the finished work of Christ is the only message of salvation that gives to him all the praise and all the glory we just talked about, we just sang about praising him. And, um, and the gospel is the means by which we do that. Even so, we speak not as pleasing men. We have no interest in pleasing men. Uh, well, you, you will either fear man or you'll fear God. Um, what is it to fear God? It's to believe God. It's just to believe him. Um, we, yeah. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. Faith doesn't come by understanding. Faith doesn't come by knowledge. Faith comes by hearing. We don't understand anything we believe. We really don't. Um, it's, faith is a gift of God in the declared message of salvation given to us in God's word. And we just believe it. We just believe it. Can't understand it. What do we understand? <laughs> what do we understand? Um, <clears throat> For neither at any time, neither at any time used we flattering words. Now, what is it to flatter someone? You've been flattered, and I'm sure that you have flattered someone else to an attempt to try to impress them by um, either an insincere or an untruthful um, uh, statement about them for the purpose of, um, uh, of selfish gain. Is that not what flattery is? <laughs> Religion is full of flattery. Uh, preachers flattering men, giving them... Uh, insincere and untruthful opinions of themselves for the purpose of their own gain. Um, I mean, I'm just thinking of the, the, the most blatant example of that that I can think about in our culture today is Joel Osteen. Uh, he's just a flatterer. <laughs> That's what he does. You can do it. You've got the power. You're able. You're beautiful. You're good. You know, he just wrote a book entitled I Am. Um, and, uh, and he makes no reference to that being the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious I am. Every chapter in that book is, I am strong, I am beautiful, I, I am able, I am... <laughs> That's flattery. That's flattery. Just flattering men, and, uh, and, and people come and flock to that kind of preaching. Paul said, we didn't, we didn't flatter you. We didn't tell you things that weren't true about yourself. But let me tell you something else that's flattering. It's flattering to tell men that they have a free will. It's an untrue statement that exalts man's opinion of himself for the purpose of personal gain on the part of the preacher. To tell a man that... that that God loves everybody and Christ died for everybody and God wants everybody to be saved and you've got to make a decision. Uh, the power is in your hand. Uh, God's voting for you. The devil's voting against you. You get to break the tie. That's flattery. That's just flattery. Paul said, I didn't come to you with flattering words. I didn't, I didn't build you up to have a higher esteem of yourself than what you ought to have. No, I told you the truth. I told you that you were dead in your trespasses and sins. I told that you were unable to believe apart from the sovereign grace of God. 
I told you that you were grass. You remember when Isaiah, when Isaiah said, um, Lord, where do I start this message of salvation? And the Lord said, tell them they're grass. Tell them they have no ability. Tell them they have no strength. Tell them they have nothing. They are completely dependent upon the grace of God. Don't flatter them. Don't flatter them. Religion is full of flattery, isn't it? It's flattery to tell a person that, that their good works somehow either earn them favor with God or at least gives evidence of their salvation. You see, any time we get a person, what is it when you flatter, when somebody's flattering, what, do you, what, do you, what is their objective? It gets you to look at yourself, isn't it? You flatter somebody uh, to get them to think highly of themselves. Um, and, and that's what religion is. It's impulse that I didn't come to you with flattering words. I didn't build you up uh, in, in a way that wasn't true. Um, I gave you hope. <laughs> But your hope was not in yourself. Your hope and your salvation was all bound up in the glorious person and finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's not flattery. <laughs> that's exalting Christ, isn't it? Paul said, uh, we, didn't, we didn't promote you. Uh, you know, and and it, a lot of religion is based on flattery in that, in, in that it, it promotes one man over another man based on how much knowledge he has. Uh, you know, and there, and there, are, there are levels of, uh, of, of sanctification based on how much, how much you've learned. Um, and men flattering one another to see who's holier, as Isaiah said, than thou. Um, all of religion is based on flattery. Paul said, when we came to you, we didn't flatter you. We didn't try to, uh, to get you to look to yourself. Uh, we told you the truth about what you are and your absolute, complete dependence upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we declared to you his finished work, his glorious person. Look what he says. For neither at any time used we flattering words... As you know, nor a cloak of covetousness. <laughs> That's what flattering words are. Flattering words are a cloak of covetousness, aren't they? You flatter someone when you, when you covet something they've got, whether it be their approval or whatever. Um, preachers do it all the time. They flatter men as a cloak of covetousness. And... Um, we're, we're, not, we're not here to covet anything from one another, are we? We're here to covet God's grace. We're here to covet Christ. We're here to covet our salvation. Nor of men sought we glory. Look what he says in the rest of this verse. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Now, perhaps you have it in the margin of your Bible. I have it in mine. Uh, that word burdensome is the word authority. What Paul's saying in this verse is, um, we could have come to you and insisted on your submission to our authority. But we didn't do that. Now, let me say this. You, you, uh, respect is never something that can be demanded. You can't demand respect from anyone. Uh, you, might, you might get submission from someone by intimidation, but you're not going to get respect. Uh, respect has to be earned, doesn't it? Um, when the Lord... When the Lord um, was teaching the disciples about who was going to, remember they were, they were fighting over who's going to be first in the kingdom of God. And the Lord said, let him who would be first become the servant of all. And that's how you're going to learn, that's how you're going to earn respect. 
through service. And Paul's in these next several verses, he's saying, I, we were apostles. We, I mean, this man had the, the ability to perform miracles. Um, he, um, he, he, could have, he could have called down the power of God. And he said, we didn't, we didn't come to you that way. Um, and it, it, again, isn't that so popular in religion? Uh, many of you came out of of a religious uh, experience where the elders demanded your respect. <laughs> uh, they put you under the authority of the law. They cracked the whip of the law over you. And, um, and they were just like the Pharisees. They put burdens on you that they themselves were not able to carry. Um, and Paul said, we didn't do that. We didn't come to you insisting on your submission to our authority. We came to you serving you. Look what he goes on to say. Uh, Nor men sought we glory. We weren't, we weren't here to try to promote ourselves. We weren't here to get you to glory in us or to bow to us or to somehow give us something. In another place, Paul said, I did not cover you, covet your silver, your gold. I wasn't in this for personal gain. Uh, we've been given a message from God, and uh, our heart's desire is for your salvation. That's this whole chapter. <clears throat> neither sought we glory from men, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been... Uh, we might have been able to exercise our authorities as apostles of Christ. We didn't do it. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. Um, you don't... He's talking about, he's talking about a, a, a small child, an infant. You don't, you don't discipline a small child. You don't put them under the law. You don't rebuke them. You don't raise your voice to them. Um, but you, 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 you love a child, don't you? And um, Paul said, when we came to you, um, we came with the authority of the gospel, and we came as apostles. But, uh, but we didn't treat you that way. We, uh, we spoke comfortably to you. Now what the Lord told Isaiah? Speak ye comfort to my people, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Speak to their hearts. Um, there, there's no place for, for browbeating preaching, uh, the kind of preaching that, you know, you, you makes people feel. Uh, well, a lot of people come to church in order to do penance. And they'll go to a, they'll, they'll go to a church where they know they're going to be beat up by the preacher so they can leave feeling as if, well, I paid my dues for my sin this week. <laughs> uh, you know, it, such hypocrisy and such denial of Christ. Um, you know, uh, you, you heard people say, well, you know, preacher, you stepped on my toes today. You know, you, you blooded me up. And people go for that. Paul said, I didn't do that. Uh, first of all, you can't add to the finished work of Christ. <laughs> He's already put away your sin. Don't, don't, don't try to do penance. Don't, don't try to, uh, to add to what he's already accomplished. As a nurse cherishes her children, so, verse 8, being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not only the gospel of God. <laughs> this gospel. You know, we never tire of hearing the gospel, do we? We never tire of preaching the gospel. Um, we never tire of reminding ourselves that that God is God. And as God, he sovereignly chose, according to his will and purpose, a particular people in a covenant of grace before time ever began. That's, that's part and parcel of the gospel, isn't it? That's the beginning of the gospel. 
Um, we never tire in reminding ourselves that when the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, he satisfied all the demands of God's holy law. Uh, he was the only one that lived a life of perfect obedience before God. And that, that God's looking to him <laughs> for all our righteousness. We have no righteousness outside of Christ. You and I have never been able to keep one of God's laws one time. Christ kept them all, all the time, with all of his heart. <laughs> and, and, and that's the gospel. We look to Christ. And then that, that he laid his life down as a ransom to pay the penalty for our sins and shed his precious blood in order to cover our sins. Put them away, every one of them, once and for all, before God. What a glorious gospel. What a glorious Christ. What a Savior. And then as proof that God was satisfied with his finished work, God raised him from the dead, <laughs> ascended him into glory. He's seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, ever living, making intercession on behalf of his church, interceding on our behalf. Father, he's one of mine. I died for him. I died for her. She's, she's one of ours. Um, what, a, what a blessed gospel. It's not of him that willeth. It's not of man's free will. That's flattery. It's not of him that worketh. It's not of anything you do. It's of God to show mercy. It's of God to do all the saving. And Paul said, we came to you with the gospel. <laughs> and not only did we impart to you the gospel, we imparted ourselves to you. We, we laid our own lives on the line for the good of your own souls, but also our own souls because you were dear unto us. You were dear unto us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail. This matter of the gospel is a, it, it is a labor. It's a good labor, but it's a constant labor, particularly upon those whom God has called out to preach it uh, day and night. <laughs> I've said this to you before. If you've got a job you can walk away from in the afternoon and, and not have to think about it again until you go to back the next morning, enjoy it. Your preacher, does, your pastor doesn't have that kind of uh, freedom. It's day and night. It never leaves. It's always there. The burden of the souls of God's people. Um, and, and, and Paul said, you know, we, we labored in the word and in prayer for you, for your salvation. Our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. Now, particularly, he's making reference here to, to the fact that Paul was being accused by his enemies that he was in this for himself. And so, as, a, as an itinerant preacher, as a missionary... Paul would go to a place and preach the gospel and, um, and would work on the side in order to provide for himself rather than giving anyone the impression that, uh, that he was coveting their material wealth. And uh, that was very particular, very peculiar to Paul. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the method that the Lord gave us for sustaining a gospel work. The method that the Lord gave us for sustaining a gospel work is for the believers to share in, uh, in, in, their, in their means to provide for the pastor who is laboring and travailing night and day in the gospel. Um, but Paul said, I, I, I wasn't going to be accused and I wasn't going to give them any opportunity to... Uh, so I, I labored, uh, not only in the gospel, but I provided for myself um, while I was there. 
You are witnesses, verse 10, and God also, how holy and justly and unblameable we behaved ourselves among you that believe. There was nothing. You know, I want to hear the gospel from someone who, first of all, speaks the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, Second of all, they believe it. And third of all, they live it. And if, if... if those things aren't consistent in, in a gospel preacher, uh, we're not going to hear. We're not going to be blessed by anything he has to say, are we? Um, so Paul's just saying, you know, whatever accusations they're making against me, you know better. <laughs> you know better. And, uh, but in particular, in, especially with the, the verses that are coming up, um, Paul was saying we did not retaliate against those who persecuted us Um, we did as the Lord did we did good unto those who we returned good for evil Uh, the Lord said don't return evil for evil Um, that they're going to they're going to persecute you for the gospel but um, but be kind to them (laughs) And he went on to say, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him to drink. (laughs) So when someone persecutes you for the gospel, you share the gospel with them. Verse 11, as you know, how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. Um, We didn't browbeat you. We didn't try to shame you. We tried to exhort you, to encourage you, to build you up in the gospel. That you should walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. We were examples unto you. And we basically said to you, follow us as we follow Christ. Here's the gospel. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, you received the word of God. That's how, that's how we're saved. We just receive the word of God. Let's believe it. Um, of his own will begat he us, birthed us into the family with the word of truth. So Paul said, when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You, you received it as the Word of God. And, uh, and it has worked in you effectually. For you, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For you also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as, you, even as they have of the Jews. So what you've experienced in terms of the opposition that's come against you for the gospel's sake, your brethren in Israel experience the same thing. This is every believer's experience for the sake of the gospel. We're not here to to, uh, flatter men. We're here to preach the gospel to them. May God give us the grace to do just that. Let's take a break.